tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer desire to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fatted calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field. And on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fatted calf, because he has a back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him, you slaughter the fatted calf? He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, here we are at the midpoint of Lent. Latare Sunday. 
the Sunday of rejoicing. And I hope and pray that our journey through Lent has been a good time of reflection and introspection for all of us so that we can more fully celebrate the joys of Christ's resurrection on Easter Sunday. Today, we're going to try something just a little bit different. You know, when I was in formation to become a deacon, and I had to take a couple of homiletics classes, and then I had taken several workshops about every other year for the last 18 years, I was told a few things I want to share with you. First, they told us, well, you know what? There really isn't a wrong way to preach. Unless, of course, you do the same thing week after week, month after month. People need a little variety. Let's put it in some language maybe we understand better. You know, if for some reason you have the luxury of having a solid diet of, say, filet mignon and lobster, and you get this every day, there's got to be a point in time where you come, boy, this is kind of boring, huh? Well, what you need is a good trip down to Mickey D's to help you get some perspective on what it is you actually have, how fortunate you are. In my humble opinion, I think that's why pastors let the deacon preach occasionally. <laughs> okay. They also told us, you know, you can preach on the Word. And if you're preaching on the Word, you should focus primarily on the Gospel. And if, and if that was what we were going to hear about this evening, it would probably entail something about a trinity of persons. You know, the forgiving father, the wayward son, and that jealous brother. This trinity of persons is, is starkly different than the trinity we're used to hearing about, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who call us to a radical and unconditional way of life where we practice unconditional love and forgiveness. But if we are honest with ourselves and we took a, a good look at our lives and those around us, you know, we might really say those characters in today's reading look a, a lot more like my life and those around me, or who knows, maybe I'm just the odd man out in this situation. Because like them, we too struggle daily to live this life, this way of life that the Father is calling us to live. They also told us, well, you know what, you can, on occasion, you could also preach about the Mass, about some of the prayers of the Mass, or maybe the rituals of the Mass. And above all of this, they told us, you know what, boys, the people of God need to hear many voices. So what we have going on tonight that we're going to try is this. We have been for the last couple of years telling you about this thing called form, right? You've heard about it, right? Anyone not hear about it? Raise your hand. We don't want to see what you have. Everybody's heard about it. We put it in print. We talk about it. Yeah, we got a good number of people that have signed up and we have a good number of people who have not signed up for it. We had a recent study group that used it, and what they brought away from it, other than a, than a really good group of discussions, was this, that within that platform, there's so much stuff. They said it's a treasure chest of, of things out there. All, it's just waiting to be opened and to be looked at. So what we'd like to do tonight is to um, invite many voices into our conversation. One of which is Father Douglas Martis. He is the um, professor of liturgy and music at Mundelman Seminary. And he's going to speak with us on the meaning of the liturgy. And this will be brought to us through the wonders of modern technology using the four platforms. And if you're keeping score and want to know where you're at in this process, then we will hear a different voice who will give us a brief witness statement. And then we'll wrap it up 
and we will get on with the universal prayer and celebration of the Eucharistic liturgy. Sound good? <coughs> so at this time, I'd like to invite you to turn your attention to the, to the front wall here as we listen to Father Marcus. simply as the work of the people. But in order to fully participate in the liturgy, we've got to have a deeper understanding of it. It's what I call the triple nuance of the word liturgy. So liturgy, the word, is made up of two Greek words. The first part, laos, means people. It's the L-I-T part of the word. And it's the same Greek word from which we get the English word laity. The second part, the urgi, or the ergon in Greek, means work. It's the same Greek word from which we get the English cognate energy. These two things put together makes the liturgy somehow the work of the people. But we've got to get deeper into the nuance of it because it's not simply the people's work. The second nuance is that the liturgy is the work of Christ done on behalf of the people. So when we understand that Christ himself is the principal liturgist, we can see that he's the one doing the work for the people because they are not able to accomplish salvation on their own. The third nuance is that the liturgy is the work of God in which the people participate. Again, from the Greek world, we have to dip into our Greek mythology. And that is that the best way to worship God is to imitate God. So if your God is Dionysius, the best way to worship God is to have a drink. If your God is Poseidon, the best way to worship God is to go fishing. But if your God is the God of salvation, if your God is the God of mercy and forgiveness, if your God is the one who sings the eternal love song, then in the liturgy we imitate God and thus worship God as God wants to be worshipped. So in the liturgy we have these three nuances. First of all, that the liturgy is the work of the people means that the people have got to be engaged in it. Secondly, that the liturgy is the work done on behalf of the people by Christ because He is the one that can say the perfect prayer to the Father. And thirdly, that the liturgy is the work of the people imitating the work of God, so that in the liturgy, these three things come together and God is praised. children, 
while in a doctor's waiting room or even just sitting comfortably on our couch. I listen to form on my iPhone and on my Amazon Fire as well as our home desktop computer. Just download the formed app uh, from the Apple Store and, and need Wi-Fi and a lot of times I'll use iPhones or my headphones while the rest of the family is watching TV or a sports game. I'm not so interested in that and I'll just listen to a formed program. Uh, you don't even really have to watch a lot of these, you just can listen to them. I stumbled onto a series for a men's faith sharing uh, series on here about a father Capone and he evidently was a uh, army chaplain and was a prisoner of war during the Korean War and that was incredible. Uh, something like that a group of men could come together and do here at church. There's just endless possibilities. With the remaining time left during Lent, I just encourage you to make a commitment to try form. Today I went to morning mass and the talk preparation was on my mind and the first reading again was from Joshua or Hosea. And there was a line in the reading that said, For it is loyalty that I desire, not sacrifice, and knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. And that was kind of an aha moment for me. It really spoke to me today. So when we try to know God and our faith better during Lent, that's really what Jesus wants us to do. So I'll be in the narthex after Mass if you should have a question about maybe your iPhone or how to do this at home. I'm no expert, but I can try to help you. Um, thank you. So this is the first episode of Father Martis's talk on the elements of the Mass. You know there's 30 more of them. All very brief two to three minute clips. If you'd like to see them and you're not already signed up for form, in an artifact or our card in today's bullet, there's a big pink insert that tells you how to go about doing it. Again, it's free to you. Use the parish access code to see what's in there. One of the other things they told us in formation is that you should end your homily with some homework. Again, we don't do that all the time because we need variety, right? But I wonder, could we all prayerfully consider maybe taking ourselves on a kind of self-directed 30-day retreat and get on there and watch the other 30 episodes, one a day, spending a little time in prayer and reflection, and who knows, we just might together come to a, a fuller, richer understanding of the most important thing that we do each week.